Welcome to season four of Outstanding Women Leaders, Witty and Wise Conversations. I'm your host, Katie L. Eads, founder and chief OWL at Outstanding Women Leaders, OWL Professional Coaching, an organization dedicated to empowering women leaders. OWL is on a mission to host 100 million Witty and Wise Conversations that disrupt the way leaders think and inspire you to disrupt business as usual in your brain. Disruption begins with a set of rules to guide our conversation today. Rule number one, nobody gets to be wrong. Rule number two, nobody gets to be right. Rule number three, everybody gets to be vulnerable. And my favorite rule number four, everything is included. If your child walks in, your phone dings, the dog barks, it's in the podcast. We do not edit here. This conversation is exactly what it needs to be in this moment in time. We've asked our guests to join us via video to allow us to create authentic connection. Eyes are the window to the soul. You will be seen here. You will be heard. There is space for you. When this conversation comes to a close, I will ask our guests three questions. If you've tuned in before, you know what they are. If you haven't, you don't want to miss them. But enough about me. Today, I'm excited to welcome outstanding woman leader, Christina Flack, a makeup artist, CEO, and founder of Pretty Girl Makeup. Her celebrity clientele includes Condoleezza Rice. We need to know about her. Hilary Swank. <laughs> She's all right, whatever. Whole host of people. Melissa McCarthy. I'd like to think I want to know if I'm funnier than her by the time this conversation is done. Uh, Rita Marino, v Renee Zellweger, Tyler Florence, and more. She has worked with high-end brands such as Gucci and Louis Vuitton. has been featured in campaigns for Macy's, Neiman Marcus, Saks Fifth Avenue, and Bloomingdale's, and has been featured in magazines including Vogue, Time, People, and Elle. In addition, Christina also writes articles about the best tips, tricks, and hacks in makeup, and is featured as a beauty expert on California Live on NBC. If you head over to our bonus episode, you'll hear all the tricks she gave me for my makeup, and if you've met me, you know I need them because I don't really wear it. Christina is also a devoted single mother of four, philanthropist, actively raising funds and awareness for sepsis. And she also started the Bo Friedman Outdoor Classroom at the Edna McGuire School in Mill Valley, California, raising money for the Baby Bo and Ken Flack Educational Funds at the Northern Light School in Oakland, California. Christina uses her platform to promote the importance of feeling beautiful from the inside out, inspiring women to be the best version of themselves and how to overcome life's greatest challenges. Welcome, Christina. Hi, how are you today? Good. I hope I got the names uh, pronounced correctly. I'd love to talk about, start by opening Perfect Good, to talk about philanthropy and the work that you're doing. I am a former CEO of a nonprofit. I uh, did a lot of philanthropy work when I owned my CrossFit gym. Tell me everything about how you got involved in raising funds and awareness for sepsis. Sepsis? Sepsis. Yes. Big one. <clears throat> Okay. Where do you want to start with the sepsis or yes. the... let's start okay. there. <laughs> I was married to Ken Flack. He was a professional tennis player, former number one player in the world with his partner, Rob Siguso. And he passed away uh, in 2018 from sepsis. So after he passed, the Sepsis Alliance contacted me and asked if I'd be willing to raise awareness for the signs of sepsis. And I said that would I was willing to do that. Um, and it's been such an interesting path for me uh, going through this grieving process, but it really did help me to help others um, while I was going through it. Um, sepsis is an infection of the blood that attacks all your vital organs. And so if your listeners want to go to sepsis.org and scroll down a bit, there is a, a little diagram that says time. And what that is, T is for temperature. You can be incredibly hot or incredibly cold. I is for infection in some places in your body, whether it be a cut tooth, a cut in your mouth, or, a, you know, my husband had bronchitis, which turned into pneumonia. Um, M is for mental decline. It's a little hard. They start getting a little foggy. And E is for excruciating pain. Uh, you feel like you're dying because you are. Sepsis is, as I mentioned earlier, an infection of the blood, and it attacks all your vital organs. It is not like the common cold where you think, oh, if I don't feel well tomorrow, I'll go to the doctor. If you have any of those signs, it's really important to get to an emergency, tell them that you think you might be septic. They will give you a blood test and get you on an IV antibiotic protocol, which you should survive from. Um, but unfortunately, my husband didn't. And so I started doing that. And then um, I, I uh, lost, my cousin lost his wife to sepsis as well. Um, 
after she had COVID um, this December is a year oh she went in the hospital and yeah, she was, uh, she had a tube that got infected. So, so um, when I read this, I'm so sorry. Uh, when I read this, um, I was like, wow, I, I, the universe always brings us together with, with people, right. When we need to meet them. Um, and my cousin, uh, she was going to give my cousin a kidney. My cousin needs a kidney still his kidney failure. And, uh, and then she got COVID and she, uh, three and a half months later went septic and died. So, oh and gosh. I was, um, I was in the Bay area when we got the, the text message to pray for her that she had gone septic. Mm -hmm. uh, so all kinds of feels uh, right now as we talk about that. And just such I important- got I got goosebumps right yeah, now. Same. Um, so just such important work that you're doing in the world um, and more, you're doing other philanthropic things as well. Yeah. So my son, Bo passed away. Uh, it'll be 16 years this Christmas day um, from SIDS. And uh, Bo was a twin and his twin, Ben, is now a six foot two uh, teenager that plays golf competitively. But um, before they had passed, I had started doing um, at the Northern Lights School in Oakland, California. I started doing a teddy bear tea because my kids have always done a teddy bear tea during the holidays. And I want, I thought every child should have that experience of having tea and sugar cookies and gingerbread and decorating them and decorating a teddy bear. So I got a bunch of my girlfriends together and I bought all these teddy bears for the kids and we brought buttons and ribbon and did all these, you know, got, brought all these supplies over and the kids had hot chocolate, ate cookies, decorated the gingerbread and, and they decorated their teddy bears. And so we started that. And then once Bo passed, I didn't want him to be forgotten. So I, decided to start the baby bow fund and um, raise money for underprivileged children to go to private school. Um, so we did that. And there we, we have a every year a celebrity golf tournament and Ken played in it. And all my kids have participated in some way with the Northern Light School, but Ben um, and Nikolai as well have been playing in the tournament. But Ben for the last six years has been sitting on this hole, hitting a golf ball and people will come all the different players from the 49ers, the Raiders, the A's, the Giants um, come and play in the tournament. And this past October, oh, pardon me, Ben raised uh, $60,000, wow. which is amazing. So in the last six years, he's raised over $150,000 um, for these kids to go to school. And he's so amazing because he is so poised. He gets up there in front of all these, you know, 200 men and says he's so honored and grateful that he gets to help other kids. And it's just, uh, as a mother, I just, mm -hmm. I burst with pride when I see that. So I feel that, you know, yes, we've had these tragedies in our life, but I feel that we have done the best we can to help others and to make some blessing out of at a very difficult situation so um then i started speaking about grieving in a positive way which i didn't think i would become a grief expert but evidently i am um i feel that i i remember being on a hike and i remember hearing like my husband talking to me saying like it's so hard to watch you crying when i can't comfort you the way i did and then I thought, wow, how would I feel if I was looking down on him or my kids in that same way? And that, and then I just thought it must be torture for him to look down if I'm miserable all the time and not happy. And so I started thinking like, you know, the best thing I can do to honor him is to lead my life with purpose and joy and love in my heart. And so I don't feel like I need to be a widow with a black veil on my head um, depressed and crying all the time. I'm not saying I don't have plenty of moments, but I really try to, I've learned to self-soothe. I've had to figure out, okay, what triggers me? Am I hungry? Am I tired? Have I worked out? What am I grateful for? Or do I need to just step away from my office for a minute and go for a hike or go shopping or get my nails done? Um, so I've learned to figure out what I need to do to stay in my, in a good place emotionally. Mm. Yeah. Watching my mom passed in 2018 and watching my dad grieve, um, I think was harder than bearing my mom in many ways. Um, and sure. every time he, like, I'm an only child. So 
So it's just me and dad. Um, and every time he comes to visit, I know that um, there's going to be mornings where we're going to hear him sobbing uncontrollably. And um, it's just, you know, grief isn't linear. And so you just have to to work through it. Um, yeah. And yeah, and you get through it. Yeah. it's not something like you're like, oh, I'm over it. You don't get right. it. You never get over it. You just <laughs> learn to manage it. But I also feel that, you know, it's important if you, I mean, no one, there's no uh, book on how to grieve. Why Everyone grieves differently in the way they want to grieve. And, you know, I think it's also, you shouldn't feel guilty if you find new love in your life or someone that makes you happy and laugh. I think, you know, my husband and I used to make jokes all the time. Like we would watch uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm, you know, with Larry mm -hmm. David. And how, remember that, those episodes when, you know, Cheryl, he, they're going to renew their vows for eternity. <laughs> so Ken would be like, oh no, this is this life. And I'm like, oh no, buddy, like this is eternity. And so I remember getting a card. Oh my from gosh, him. Dan is that, so Dan and I are like, you guys, I was like, you don't want me to be happy and move on. He's like, no, this is forever. <laughs> yeah. So my husband would be like, you know, if I die, I want you grieving forever. I want you miserable. <laughs> That's basically what Dan told me. And I was like, oh, I don't know if I can promise that. <laughs> yeah. But I do know that, but I do feel that like Ken sent me my new person. They are so similar in so many ways. And they like, it's so crazy. They both have the same amount of kids spaced out the same, same uh, boy, girl, boy, girl. Um, Ken's spirit animal was a, was a, a, an eagle. And my person has an eagle tattoo on the same shoulder where Ken had a tattoo of St. Louis Cardinal. So that's weird. And then the third thing, which is the weirdest of all, I have never known any two people in the world, except these two that have this habit of brushing their teeth, squeezing the toothpaste in their mouth first and then brushing. I don't know any two, those two. So clearly I have a type. <laughs> Isn't that weird? That is so weird. I know. I also, the funny thing is, yeah, mm. their response is the same. Like, I'm like, why do you do that? And, and, and both of them said the same thing. Well, why wouldn't you? It only makes sense. You put it in your mouth and you like literally the same thing. I understand that the logic would probably have to be the same. I uh, guess so. Mm -hmm. But now I feel like maybe this is how the, the future generation should be dating on apps. What is the weirdest, <laughs> most obscure thing about you? And put on there, like looking for someone that knows the proper way to put squeezed toothpaste in their mouth. That is, they so don't think it's weird. That's the thing. They well, think we their whole family do it. Is it a family thing? Because that's mm -hmm. how you learn to brush your teeth. No, I think, um, I think both of them, that was their own little invention. They think they're very clever. I don't oh. know. Their brain <laughs> operates in the same world that you squeeze toothpaste in your mouth while brushing your teeth. Yeah. Really interesting. Mm -hmm. Dan, yeah, I know. there's no words. You have no words because I know I don't either. Sometimes I'm just like, I, I can't do it. Uh, they haven't converted me. Neither of them have converted me into doing what they do. What an incredible story, and um, and just a, a beyond the makeup. So much to sh to learn from you and to share. I just you know. Thank you so much for going deep. I don't know if you, like I didn't expect that. I was excited to learn about celebrity gossip and you're over here sharing. Oh, oh actually. Um, yeah. I, and, um, I, I also used to fundraise for poor children to go to private school. So I love all the synergy. That was my last job before COVID. And then, well, my last job before I was like, all right, it's time to be a business owner again. I decided in January of 2020, it was time to be a business owner again. COVID's been fine. It's coaching and COVID are fine. <laughs> um, so in addition to being a philanthropist, uh, yes. a woman who's raised amazing children, who's had to bury a child and a husband, you've also managed to build um, a pretty amazing empire. You Pretty girl makeup. You have your own makeup line. Um, yes. I don't know if it's an empire, but it's a company. <laughs> but thank you for that. <laughs> I mean, I feel like it's an empire. You don't need to have a, but do we have to have subjects in an empire? It's an empire of one, maybe. I mean, you know what? You have to, uh, drink, you know, put that out there. It's an empire. If you want it to be one, I guess you have you to say it. it to be one. 
Um, you're, you know, you're on, people can see you on uh, as a beauty expert on NBC and, um, and you created a makeup. Tell us about your makeup. How does one like mad scientist create makeup and yeah. And how do I get, you know, what do I, how do I buy it? What do I, you know, all the things. Okay. So I started my company because I was a mother running around and I was constantly in a battle between my water bottle and my lip gloss. Ooh. I couldn't find one that would just stay on in between drinking the water. It would dry out. So I just couldn't find one that I liked. So I thought, so I found a beauty uh, chemist and it's a very interesting process. You go through the formulation of the texture and then you go to the color. So it's, uh, it took a lot longer than I expected. It was over a year. And I tested it on my friends and family that are all different shades of the rainbow because I'm self-funded at the time. And I wanted to make sure that it would look good on everybody. So it took uh, a lot of, it took a lot longer. And so that's why I often say to people, really love what you're doing because you have to love the process. Otherwise you're going to fail because it takes way longer, way more, way more everything, everything. And so if you don't love what you're doing, you're going to fail because it's taking, going to take up so much of your time and it's going to be frustrating and bumpy. But I look at going through this, not as a, you know, what has happened through my life, my career as a failure, I look at them as uh, learning lessons. So I don't, I'm never afraid to try something new because like, even when I just started this new thing with NBC, I'm a makeup. I like being back here. Like even this is like pushing it. Right. <laughs> but my friend Berlin Fisher, who was, you know, the beauty, uh, beauty expert before, and now he's one of the hosts. He's like, Hey girl, you need to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. So that's kind of my new thing is be learn to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. It's okay. You'll, you'll survive. And it's pretty cool to, I am so like, I've had the most crazy year work-wise. I've done TV shows. I was in People Magazine with Rita Moreno. Um, I did TV show with Tyler Florence. Um, I did one with, I mean, I've done so much. I've been on covers of magazines this year, interesting magazines. Like I never, I've written articles for a bunch of magazines. Like I cannot even believe the the year I've had uh, professionally. It's like, probably the best. I can't even imagine topping it, but I'm going to try next year. But ah, I love that. I think it's really good. Um, I saw something on Instagram yesterday and I put it, it's on my story right now, but it was like, I don't care about what's happened with anyone else. Like I had a great year and you know, you need to have, like, is it been your greatest year? You know, just cause I just think it's so great. You should really feel proud and take a minute to think about the year you've had. Did you like it? Did you not? What what was the highlight? What was the worst? And kind of evaluate your year and, and set new goals for the coming year. I think it's a really um, important thing to do. And if you've had some successes, you know, love them for a minute. You don't have to just go, oh, well, that happened. Well, like you can sit with it for a minute and feel like really proud um, of, of what you've done this coming year. I have a new daughter, actually. I got a new daughter this year. Um, my daughter, Jasmine, I uh, met her on a photo shoot. She's from China and she, uh, I mean, this is me being the proud mom. My daughter works for Apple, love that. And she is also an actress and the model. And I was asking her like, so, oh, your family's here and where, you know, where are they? And she's like, no, my family isn't here. I'm an only child. I was raised in China. I came here to study university and I sought asylum. My parents work for um, the government. I can never go back. They'll put me in jail forever. I'm like, well, what about your parents? She's like, I, I I, don't know. I probably won't ever see them again. And I'm like, are you kidding me? I'm like, I'll be your mom. And she's like, will you? I'm like, yeah. Like, you, everyone needs some family. So this is our first Christmas with my daughter, Jasmine. And I'm like, so proud to be her mom. And my kids, like, you know, she, it's so weird. She is so meant to be my kid because- she golfs, my boys golf, my daughter Rose golfs. Um, she rides horses. She works, at, She her, her just her living, the way she lives, her routine is just like mine. Uh, she has her corporate job. She has her creative job. I don't know, she just fits. Like, I'm like, I wasn't even supposed to be on the shoot this day. I just happened to be, and my other daughter was assisting me. 
And she, my daughter goes, why are you on the shoot? I'm like, I don't know. Now I know. Cause mm-hmm. I got my new daughter and um, so it's pretty cool. So I've had a big year. Yeah. So tell us more about this big year. And also what do we need to know about Condoleezza Rice and all of your, Condoleezza I mean, Rice. yeah. Condoleezza Rice was so interesting. It was for Time Magazine. She is a professor at down at Stanford. So I went down there. She, funny enough, she had no assistant, no handlers, and she's a big golfer too. She's obsessed with it. And her golf coach and my daughter's golf, they have the same golf coach. And um, I love so that talk- women and don't, powerful women don't need handlers, by the way. The men would yeah. have had a handler. Yeah. <laughs> I you know, love an assistant or someone. I don't know. No, she was great. We just, she is much more beautiful in person. Um, Time Magazine, they, their lighting is very harsh. So the yeah. image of Lisa is uh, a little, it, she's much more beautiful in person. She's lovely. Very down to earth. Very nice. Adore. She was great. She was great. Okay. How about Renee Zellweger? She uses my lip gloss. Um, my girlfriend, Kari Hagar, uh, Sammy Hagar's wife was at a concert and she handed her a bunch of my lip gloss. And then I got this lovely handwritten note from her saying, thank you for the lip gloss. And she loved it and she was using it. So that was pretty cool. Amazing. Now on the bonus episode that people should definitely tune into to hear all about makeup tips for me, etc. You thought I was hilarious. Am I more funny than Melissa McCarthy? <laughs> You're up there. I'm You're up there. there. I'm up there. So I have done some stand-up comedy in New York. The East Village loved me. Lower East wow. Village did not. Um, and you know, I like to think that I'm hysterical. So good to know I'm up yeah, there. I like to think we're funny. Well, that's fair. I like to think that people laugh though, whenever I say that I'm funny, I'm hosting an event tomorrow. There's uh for Fim City or not hosting on the MC rather. Um, so I'm just trying out some jokes today. See how they're going. I how am I doing? Be, I think you're going to be brilliant. I am totally <laughs> fantastic. All right. Last celebrity I want to ask you about, because I don't know a lot of celebrities. Uh, I want to know about Hillary Swank. She was probably my most challenging client. She was late. Um, her skin was very, um, not, it wasn't at its best. And, um, but that is one, um, it was featured. My makeup was featured of her in us magazine with a before and after, I did her makeup for uh, the Bul- a Bulgari event here in San Francisco. Christian Dior sent a whole their whole line for me to use on her. I wrote a magazine article about it. And um, it, it is always an honor to work with these celebrities um, and then see it in, in seeing your work in a magazine. I, I, I don't think I will ever not get that thrill that I did um, uh, Rita Moreno this mm-hmm. past spring magazine and that I mean what an honor the woman is 90 years old yeah and she's pretty so awesome. hot like she's stunning um so that was a thrill so I I I hope I I know I will always get a thrill anytime I see my work in a publication it is it's an honor because there are a lot of makeup artists in the world and to see your work out into the world is it's a big it's a big deal I don't I I, I just get like, oh my God, I can't believe it. So mm, I love that. And I'm so happy to hear that about Rita Marino. I think the only reason I asked about Hillary Swank because I was kind of like if my intuition on her was like, she's kind of iffy. Good to see my intuition was working today. Um, as we wrap up, before I ask you the three questions, what else do we need to know about pretty girl makeup? Where can we find it? Where can we find you? If you live in the Bay Area, like can someone just book you as a makeup artist? How does it all work? You can go to christinaflack.com um, and send me an email or request, and then we'll see if it works within my calendar. I have three agents. I'm with four artists. And so it just, they book me up. So it just depends. Hopefully it'll work, but oh, I try to be flexible. I have that question then too, is how does one get an agent? One has to get a portfolio together. So you need to have, um, lifestyle pictures, fashion pictures, you know, different beauty pictures. And you send a nice note to all these different agents all over the world. And and hopefully one of them will select you and um, represent you. Mm -hmm. It's just that easy. You get a portfolio together and then you, you it it takes a lot of time. 
it does. You you need to have a, quite a few pictures and um, to do a lot of work. I, I'm really lucky now um, that I have so much work in my book that um, it's easier But for me. But, you know, I I am grateful for uh, all the jobs that I have. It's They're a lot of fun and it's um, it's exciting to work with all these fun people. I love it. Yeah. What are your tips for people that are trying to break into this industry that you are building an empire in? Well, if you want to be a makeup artist, I would probably start, you know, work on your friends and family, um, you know, get a makeup kit together and use it just for your clients. It's not for your personal use. Things have to be like stellar clean. Uh, you know, you have to have really great brushes. You, your makeup has to be really clean and new all the time. Um, and then start working, you know, I would suggest probably contacting different photographers that you are in your area and see if you can, I did a lot of test shooting with a lot of photographers and models for free and made no money because I was trying to get a book, get my, you know, portfolio yeah. together. So that would probably be the best thing to do. Um, and then just maybe assist another makeup artist that works and see if what you can learn and, and start like that. Uh, it's a great idea. And I love the par partnering with photographers, people that would be looking for that. Um, building your portfolio. Fabulous advice. Thank you so much for giving us. Thank you for me. Um, oh, and we're offering a 25% discount um, with discount code pretty girl on prettygirlmakeup.com. Yes. Prettygirlmakeup.com for the lip gloss, which I did check out and it's got really um, good ingredients. We talked earlier about nutrition. So this is not some crappy synthetic ingredients. It's all organic. Is that the word we use? I don't, it's, am well, I... it's, it's natural. It's not organic. natural. That's the word I was looking for. Thank you. Um, it's natural lip gloss. See, I did go to the website. I just had a moment before we went on. Um, so check it out. And last thing is three questions before we go. Question number one, what is your superpower? Oh, what a good question. I think my superpower is that I know how to love really super big. You do, and super long with the philanthropy and continuing to keep that love alive. Yes. What's your purpose? To help others, to help others be the best versions of themselves. And what's next for you? Ooh. I don't, whatever the universe has in store for me, I think it's just creating more beautiful things, uh, expanding my line, creating a new line, um, doing different TV and print things. Creating oh. a new line, put it out there. Yes, I am creating a new line, men's and women's skincare. I want, um, yeah. Awesome. I look forward to following you and, and watching your what's next unfold to the universe. And um, I always give my guests the last word. So whatever you'd like to leave our listeners with today. Well, I think everyone should be doing what they get excited about, inspired to do every morning, wake up and like, what is it that you love doing and figure out how to get paid. Um, and don't be stuck. I, I would just tell people, don't, don't feel like, you don't love where you live. You don't like your relationship. You don't like your job, all this stuff, change it. No one is going to change it, but you make steps towards change. I think it's super important as a mother that my kids see me in healthy, happy situations, whether it be my work, my relationship, where I live, um, because they've seen me go through things that aren't so fantastic all the time, but I'm always, the only failure is not trying to me. So I think just try. And if there's a bump, don't feel like it's a failure. It's just a learning lesson. And Tyler Florence taught me that. 